And if I start scanning, <laughs> we now see a scanning screen. Good news, everyone. The Yesu FT5 DR just got a new firmware update, and it unlocks the feature we've been looking for since it pretty much came out, which is the ability to see the frequencies of the memory channels when you're scanning, as well as it mentions some other updates of some other features. It's a little vague, but I'm going to show you how to do the upgrade, and um, I do want you to follow this explicitly, and I want you to do this with the manual open on how to perform this upgrade. So first things first, head on over to yesu.com. There will be a link in the video description. But once you're there, here's your FT5. You know, you just click on the FT5 there in the middle. Go to Files, and you're going to scroll all the way down. You're going to look for the version of, say, U.S., for instance. If you are in North or South America, that's going to be U.S. And if you are anywhere else, you're going to want to pick the other one. But note the date. It is August 2024. You will see when we pull up the firmware documentation, it will break down for you what exactly you need to have. Make sure that you have the right version for your radio. I cannot stress this enough. It's very important. So you want DST USA. Versions cover North and South America. OS is Australia and New Zealand. When it comes to HTs, I follow the upgrades to the letter. I don't mess around with them one bit because uh, it, it can just lead to problems. And there is some uniqueness with the Yesus that I'm going to walk you through, and you, you need to follow them explicitly. So scroll down here. Make sure that you do load the .NET Framework 3.5. Five service pack one. Yes, this is like 2008 or something like that when this came out. But just go ahead and follow the process. And then at that point, you will open up the installation tool and you will load the USB driver following the instructions. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I have the unzipped file that I downloaded. I have the USA version right here for main. And I'm going to run FT5. DR main version 113 USA. It is important to note that if you're going through this process, firmware upgrades can be detrimental to your radio, in some cases leading to a bricked radio where it doesn't have a firmware, it can't start, it can't load, and you are left sending it back for refurbishment or reflashing or whatever they do at the factory. So make sure that if you're going down this road, follow the instructions to the best of your ability. And I do recommend you do this periodically, maybe once twice a year to pull out some features and bug fixes. In some cases, radios still have those today. All right, so the gray window here is the firmware utility. And note that everything's blank for COM port, baud rate, et cetera. You need to go ahead and do the USB install first and foremost. If you've already installed it, then you can skip this step. I have already done that, so I'll skip it. Now, all right, here comes the process that we have to follow to the letter. First, I'm using the Yesu provided mini USB cable with the tapered head, so it will fit in the hole on the side of the radio. Now, before we do anything, we've taken the battery off. We have a 12 volt source that we're gonna to provide to the coaxial plug. But if you see right here, there's a tiny, tiny switch. And that's why I have my trusty Harbor Freight picks out because what I need to do is I need to go in here and slide the switch up. And it is now in the up position. There's actually two parts to this firmware installation. There's the main firmware and then there's the sub firmware. So the top is the main or up and bottom or down is the sub. And we, it's a two-step process, so that's the first step. Next, we're going to plug in the radio to the computer. So now we'll give it 12 volts and hopefully we'll see my device manager react to plugging in the 12 volts. And to verify we have what we expect, there should be a new dropdown for Rainios USB Development Tools Generic Boot USB Direct. That is what the driver is for. So you have to have the driver before you go any further. We'll go ahead and click the EXE file. This is going to be an admin app, so it's going to cause everything to freak out on your computer until you approve it. And then we click the Update button. It's going to say before updating, make sure the following preparation, remove the battery pack, remove the data terminal cover, that's the rubber grommet, change the program switch next to the data terminal to the main CPU up, connect the FT5 terminal to your PC using the supplied cable, supplied cable from Yesu, it came in the box. Note, this is not the SCU19 cable. It doesn't work with the SCU19 cable. You need to use just a standard mini USB and the Yesu cable is the right one because again, that hole is slightly tapered and you likely won't be able to get other cables in. And then we're gonna connect the AC adapter. We've seen that. We have the USB port on the computer. So let's hit okay. 
And it found it. It found my device. I'm going to hit OK. And then we wait and pray. We may not see anything above our heads, so just leave it alone. Everything's good. All right. F firmware is complete. Now, something to note when you're doing the instructions, once you complete the main installation of the firmware, all things are exactly as written. This firmware includes both a sub and main file, so I'm assuming that we need to install the sub as well. And the sub is the same process, but we have to move that switch down. But note the file here that, that was included with the firmware. It gives you somewhat of a confusing direction here. So when you go back to the main installation, it says main there on that program. When you go through the whole process, it's going to walk you through it again, switch it up for main, switch it down for sub, Let's do the connection. You're going to do the install. It's going to find the radio, say, yep, there it is. It's eventually going to say firmware update complete. And then it's going to start telling you to go ahead and perform the AC, uh, perform the all reset on the radio to be able to bring everything back up and check the version number. But then it kind of says, OK, go back to the normal setting and go through this whole process. But then it repeats it, it basically repeating the process of the main, which really I think what they meant here is that you perform the sub installation because the sub installation is here. So we're going to continue on and we're going to do the sub and then we're going to perform the all reset. With our first installation complete, we're going to disconnect the power. We're going to unplug the USB. We're going to take our handy pick here. And we're going to bring the switch all the way down. Now we're on the sub. There's your sub processor connection for loading. So again, USB first. And if we did this all correctly, when we plug this in, our device manager should see it. It should flash. And we should see the generic boot USB direct connection, which we do. Now from here, we're going to run the sub installation application, which is going to be under the main firmware update under the sub directory. Double click that. And we are going to run the exe, which we get another update. We're going to click update. It's going to tell us the same thing. Remove the battery, have the USB connection. Switch needs to be in the lower down position. And we hit OK. It sees our device. So we're going to hit the OK button. And give it the magic fingers. And it's working. Excellent. So that's a good sign. Now, I'm not going to tell you to not do the sub uh, in, in skipping that and just do the main. It's possible that given the firmware upgrade tree, that the sub could be fine for a couple of main upgrades, vice versa. Again, this is all my speculation. I generally like to do the full firmware, whatever they're telling me to load. If it's in this firmware file, I'm going to do it regardless of how my current version is. And if you want to check it, you can. You can run a firmware check on the radio before doing all this, record the numbers before going through this process. But given it's been a while since I've upgraded the firmware on this radio, I'm just going to go ahead and do both. And we have a complete firmware upgrade. All right, so now we need to perform a full reset of the radio or what they call a reset all. All right, we're going to disconnect our USB connection. We're going to bring the switch back up to normal operating mode. Okay, it's in the middle position. That's your main operating position. Now, there is a, a slight disagreement with the instruction manual here that I'm, I'm going to correct for you all to follow. But it tells you to hold down F, uh, the F menu, A, B, and band button, and then plug in the DC connection, and it should turn on. That is not the case. It, it won't do that. So what you need to do instead is, with the DC connection there, F menu, A, B, and band, hold it down with three fingers, and then hold the power button down. You'll hear a dut dut dut, and then it's going to say all reset, and you're going to hit OK. So it did an all reset. It didn't really show you it, but you can just assume it did because it went to the call sign input screen. So we're going to insert my call sign. OK, there we go. We now have an upgraded FT5. So let's check the firmware before we move on to the next steps. From the main screen, go ahead and hold down F menu. We're going to go to display. We're going to go down to software version, and we're going to hit menu. Now, your main and sub should match the firmware options that you downloaded and the software titles you ran. In this case, they ran, they match. So let's check to see what the big fuss is all about with the new update. So let's go back to the VFO. All right, 145. And if I start scanning... We now see a scanning screen. 
Wow, that's a, that's a big uh, change of what it was before. It would blank out the screen. Well, the good news is that the scanning is working, as you would kind of expect if you hit Menu, Scan. It's a little... Uh, the, the two dashes is a little odd. I don't fully get that, but um, it seems to be working. So we can leave that scanning, um, or you can hit PTT and it'll stop. But I'm curious, will it work on memory mode? So I've only got a couple of frequencies loaded here, but anyway, let's hit Menu, Scan. No. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I, I thought it might work the same, but uh, no, it's it's not doing that either. We're just seeing MemScan. So maybe that's going to be an upgrade in the future. I am not sure. I think it's good that Yesu finally added the VFO view on scan. I would like to see it also work for memory in the future, but maybe that's going to be an upgrade they're working on. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have comments or questions, please post them in the comments below, and links will be in the description for everything we talked about. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.